YOLO composing gloves here, and today we're going to be making a beat with Scalar. Here's a quick preview. All right, now that you've heard the preview, let's get into the guts. How does this thing work? So it's an enabling program. If you don't know theory, this thing could be a godsend to you. You could be like, oh my gosh, this thing does things I could, I simply couldn't do these things without it. If you already know theory uh, if, and you're not proficient at piano, this is a huge thing. I personally think it's a really inspiring tool. And let me just show you how I'd kind of use it. And let's say that you're writing a beat, you've got your hook in mind. You already kind of know what you're going to play as the main hook. Well, what you can do is you can click start, and I don't have a hook in mind. I'm just going to sort of improvise, and it's going to record notes and analyze them and things and suggest scales and chords I could use based on the notes that I give it. So let's just play something in. I mean, you, you could give it MIDI files, peck something out on the keyboard, and it says, all right, based on these things, these are the scales we suggest. And it's kind of like a game of apples to apples. I mean, you can see here, this one, C minor scale is serious, sad, emotional, sentimental. We could go C harmonic minor scale. Sad, epic, tragic. You, that's the one we're going to go with. And we see here our chords change. Now, you got a lot of music theory terms in here. Uh, triad's just a three-note chord. We've even got Roman numeral analysis, functional harmony, and we've got like just chord names, some cool stuff. So we can pick our chords, and if we click on them, we can hear them. Now, one thing that's really cool is they give you voicing options. Now, voicing is the way you put the notes and the chords together. So like I could play a C minor chord, and you see C's my lowest note, but I, I mean like, I could take this E flat and move it up. And I've now changed the voicing. And I could add notes up there. Voicing is really more about how notes talk to other notes, but you can also see it as the rearrangement of things in the top. It's a bunch of music theory stuff, counterpoint, blah, 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 blah. We're not here because you want a lesson in theory. We're here because you want to know how to sort of cheat it. <laughs> so let's go ahead. Let's just click on voicings and you can get different voicings. See, that's pretty cool. Voicings are amazing. So this is an amazing option. I really like messing with this. So what you can do is you can click one, drag it in and say, that's my first chord. Beautiful. We can pick a different sound. We can go for like synth one. I wonder if it's a, it'd be cool if that sound was made with synth one. There's a synth called synth one, if you didn't know. My video about it got a community guideline strike. It was literally a video talking about how you can get Synth 1, it's free, and they didn't like that. It's kind of dumb. Okay, we'll go with this chord next. So let's go to 5. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so this is uh, got a nice vibe to it. Let's pick a different uh, sound. I'm gonna go back to the piano. Oh, we got an electric piano. Let's go for that. All right, I'm not vibing this one anymore. I'm gonna remove it and pick something else. I'm probably gonna need to go with some sort of a G thing. And for this, I'm gonna go into chord variations because I kind of want to go minor in and uh, move away from functional, or not functional, but like just, what do you call this, tonal harmony, whatever. So I'm gonna go to chord variations, and I'm gonna go select the note G, and we get all these G chords. We can pick one of these. The reason I, I know I want a G is because I wanna do what's called a cadence here, and I wanna go from the fifth, the fifth chord to the first chord. Let's 
Why are these all so high? Ah, sus fours are some of my favorites. We get some really fun ones down the line here. Let's just go. We'll go with just the classic sus four. Got to go with the classic sus four. If you don't know, I mean, you can just click around and find something you like, and, and away you go. Uh, but those are some of the thoughts that go through my head. We can have like multiple banks of these, but once we have this sort of figured out, uh, this is what I use Scalar for, and then we're just going to click and drag the MIDI out. So click, drag, da 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 plop it in there. So I've got it now in an instance of contact. I'm going to save here because I've tried recording this video before, and everything started crashing on me. It was awful. So we'll call this the Please Don't Crash Again. I decided to just start over because I, I was pretty frustrated. So let's go ahead and uh, select all of these and they get this little arrow guy right here because these are all just way too short. And I'm just going to make them all a bar long. If we were really smart, we'd come in and like make a rhythm out of them and maybe remove some notes and add some, some things moving around. But we're just going to go with super basic, easy peasy. Also going to change the tempo to 80. And if we play this, we'll hear nothing because contact's got nothing loaded up. So I'm going to load up a contact instrument. I'm going to go for an instrument called Swarm because Swarm is pretty dang cool. We're going to go for Woods High. Woods High. Uh, play a note. There's like a... I've got a weird bug right now with this. I'm going to go for mostly a reverb. A reverb. R. I forgot what the R stands for. Something amazing. Up here, it's called Woo, apparently. Woo level. I'm assuming it's some sort of an ambient mic. And we're just going to pick um, a, ver a version swarm. Why won't it let me pick other ones? Hey, I want to know what that one sounds like. I kind of want to do that one. Let's make sure these are high enough to be played. And let's go to pattern. That's pretty dank. Okay, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to control S because again, I'm just a little worried. It was not Scalar at all's fault last time. It was contact. Uh, I know for a fact it was contact. Contact hates me. So we're going to load up a strings high. You look at this. I don't trust this at all. Wait, is it going to work? Please don't. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna work, but it's not. It's crashed. Watch. Give it a sec. We'll give it mercy for five seconds. One, two, three. Okay, I'm done. Oh my gosh. This is so dang lame. What the heck is up with contact, guys? Please don't crash again. Hmm. Do I need to save it as a different name now? Like, I knew you were going to crash. Okay, should we try it again? I kind of want to try it one more time. I think it didn't like the fact that I click dragged it. So instead, let's appease the contact gods and instead just double click Woods High. And it liked that. Also, still a weird bug. All right, cool. Well, that's one of the secrets. Now you guys know. You're welcome. Uh, let's go for... Ah, this is Woods High. Woods High worked last time. Okay, just kidding. Is it okay with closing it? Oh, it doesn't like being closed either. This is unworkable. This is completely unworkable. How the heck is... Anyone's supposed to get crap done if it's constantly doing junk like this. Okay, we're going to open it one more time. Please don't crash again. <laughs> Contact. We're going to load up strings high. Yeah, it likes it when you load it up that way. Play a note, it magically knows. We're gonna copy this output and put it in the strings. And if you click on the edge just before you reach the interface, you can see the 
keyboard for that instrument down here. That's how you like change what keyboard you're looking at so you can make sure you're in the correct range. Cool, so now that we have our chord line, after a tremendous amount of pain, we're gonna go through and add a bass. Um, actually, let's add some drums first. I think drums will be an important thing to guide my bass line construction. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some drums real quick. All right, so I made this little one bar loop, sounds like this. I know it's genius, here it is in context. I'll vary it up later. So there's what we have. Let's add in our bass. So to do the bass, I'm going to do it all in the same pattern. I'm going to copy our chords, paste it into the bass. I'm going to go through and first I'm going to delete the other notes and keep our lowest notes. These will these are important notes because they're what's called the notes that pick the inversion. So these notes are special. And that's all you need to know. So let's go ahead and load up a bass. Let's load up the Rickenbacker bass. And let's go for the all muted one. What the heck? And I'm not scared of this instrument. It doesn't do anything weird to me. These other ones, man. I don't know. Hmm. Let's uh, choose a preset. Well, this is totally contact six. I've I've not experimented, but Contact 5 never gave me this, this crap. Look at this. What is this, a freaking joke? Come on. So, okay. Whatever. <laughs> We're rolling without that stuff. Let's, uh, let's pull in some things. Where's my note off command, bro? Okay, thanks. Let's uh, make this. I'm clicking in all the wrong spots. Let's click low. Let's bring it down low. Okay, so right here, I am using my knowledge of scales to do this and just sort of in visualizing in my head what I want this to sound like. It's what I have so far. And I'm gonna do something else sort of like this over on this one and possibly walk to that. But I started with my bass notes and it just, it just depends on the track, uh, but you know, this is where I sort of branch away and Scalar gave me the chord structure and now I'm able to just jive off of it. But like here, for example, we're gonna go like... Mm. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Did I do a full quarter note there? I did. Dun. Dun. I don't know. I don't know if that was going to work yet. <laughs> oh, never mind. It totally worked. Except for they're going to go right here and we're going to scooch this over. And... and there's a way to tell the swing to only apply to certain things. But if I turn this one off, you have to like go into each channel individually. And in here, they have a swing thing on the time. Actually, I think I could tell it. I think I could tell it to just not touch this one. Just turn the swing off. Will that work? Yep, that works. Cool. It's a lot easier than I thought. All right, now we have our bass line. I mean, right there, we're grooving. I think I'm gonna call it right here. I mean, this just jives. I've got a bunch of things sort of going on in my head, additional lines I could add. But I mean, you saw a scalar in action, an easy way to get your rolling really quick. Uh, just toss it on some good old sounds, bury them up. I mean, we didn't even have to do a tum. You can construct a bass line from the chords you were given. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. So here's our, our final loop despite the troubles Contact tried to give us. Oh, 
not quite the perfect cutoff. If you have any questions about this, let me know. There is an affiliate link to Scalar down in the description. Right now, I believe it's going for like $40 or whatever. Uh, you could check and tell me what you think. It's a pretty amazing tool. Some people, I've, I've read some testimonies where people are just swearing by it. It's really opened the doors for them. I know when I was new, things like these kinds of chord structures were completely over my head. I didn't understand them. I didn't know how to write them. I didn't know p piano or keyboard or any of that stuff. So this was a, this is really an enabling tool. Wish someone had handed it to me when I was new, but at the same time, it kind of forced me to learn piano and, and get the keys and all that. So it was a, it was a really, really interesting sort of a, an idea. But anyways, yeah, subscribe and have a blessed day.